Hello Pelican Sound, this is your head golf professional Tim Harris. I want to take a moment of your time today to kind of go over just a few things that are important to the golf operation. I uh, wanted to make sure everybody is up to date on things that are coming up and going on and how you proceed and some of the protocols with the golf operation. Um, most of you all know the uh, Chelsea Tea Time system is what we use to uh, request and to book tea times. Just wanted everyone to be aware that we are running the triple crossovers now as we get into the busy part of the season. So uh, for six days out of the week, we're running triple crossovers that go from 7.30 till 9.22 in the morning. Then they start up again at 11.45 and go right to about 1.44. And then ultimately at four o'clock, we start the third crossover. So when you're requesting your tee times, please make sure that you request times within those parameters. Um, once we get to the four o'clock times, walkers are, um, allowed to be out in the golf course but not before then um, and we just want to make sure that everybody uh, does not get shut out just because they might have requested the wrong tee time so please make sure you put your correct requests in when you are requesting requesting a Chelsea tee time uh, the only day we don't do triple crossovers is Tuesday that's our ladies day so we have an open play shotgun at 115 those afternoons so if you're looking to play on Tuesday and you're not part of the ladies day event just make your request for 115 in the afternoon and that's when we will have an open play shotgun for all players. Uh, we also will have nine hole times available on the C course on Tuesday afternoons as well from 1.30 on. Uh, and walkers can also play on Tuesdays after 3.30. Um, I also wanted to make sure that everyone's aware of the new app that's available. You can download the app uh, on your smartphone and you can access a lot of information there. You can request tee times. Uh, you can post scores on GIN. Uh, the GIN handicap system is what we use um, for our tournament software as well. Um, it links up. Um, the GIN system is available on the app, so it might be a little bit easier for you to post scores that way instead of having to go into the trailer. So I do uh, recommend everybody get that app. Helps you post scores on there if you can't get access to the trailer. Even after the trailer is closed, we close at 5 o'clock every day and you have, say you played a late round and you can't come in and post your score, well you can do it on the app. Um, our handicap committee is tasked with making sure that everybody posts their scores, so we want to make sure that if you are playing a round of golf and you in our, are in our handicap system, that you're going ahead and you're posting your scores. You have 72 hours after the time that you play golf to post your score. So please make sure you do that, uh, whether you're using the app or whether you're coming into the Pro Shop trailer and using our touch uh, touchscreen monitor to post scores. Um, let's get a little bit into golf course etiquette. Uh, this is a topic that uh, has come up quite a bit. Um, I've also posted videos on it. I want to make sure everybody does their part. Uh, our superintendent really wants to encourage that we drive our golf carts in the fairways as much as possible when we're out there playing golf. So when you're out there, please drive in the fairways throughout your round, only drive in the rough if you have to get to the cart path or if you're exiting um, the fairway. But the green stakes are in the fairway to enter and exit. Drive down the fairway, exit and enter at the green stakes. Um, fill your divots with sand that's provided on the cart. Fix your ball marks, rake the traps. The, the rakes are inside the traps now. Everyone, if everyone does their part and you know does a good job of taking care of the golf course, we're getting up there 400 rounds now throughout the season. We'll have a nice golf course. Uh, handicap cart drivers. This is important. I want everybody to understand um, if you do have a handicap cart flag and you've applied for it and we've issued you a flag, um, please be aware of where you're supposed to drive on the golf course. Um, we have uh, given out some of these charts that I have here, the handicap cart drivers, um, kind of explaining where you should be going on the golf course. Um, I'm going to send an email out to all the handicap car drivers too in the ne next coming weeks. Just so you understand that the blue discs that are out there on the golf course, so you'll see them around the edges of the greens. They're placed in places that are away from the edge of the green, about 20 to 30 feet. That is where handicap carts are supposed to uh, stay on the outside of that perimeter. We do not want the handicap carts driving in between the green edges and the uh, fairway and the bunkers. And also we don't want them driving near the lake edges. Um, we've had reports of people seeing handicap carts in some spots that could be dangerous. So we want to really make sure that if you do have a handicap cart and you do have that flag, that you follow the procedures. Look for the blue discs, stay on the outside of the blue discs. 
and do not drive your carts up near the close edge of the uh, of the green complex. Um, it also will help with uh, wear and tear of the turf. Our superintendent does a great job keeping the golf course in great shape. So if we have too much abuse of those handicapped carts getting in areas where they're not supposed to be, then all it's going to do is it's going to damage the turf. Um, so if you do have a handicap flag, please um, be respectful. Uh, do not drive up near the collars or near the edge of the green. And please try to stay away from some of those areas that could be a little bit dicey and could be dangerous for you to be driving on. Um, also part of the uh, uh, etiquette really is our dress code. Um, people seem to be, able to be doing a good job uh, wearing the proper uh, clothing, tucking in your shirts. If you're a man, shirts with a collar. Uh, everyone obviously knows no blue jeans or denim. Uh, ladies, make sure that if you do have uh, no sleeves on your shirt that you do have a collar. And if you don't have a collar, you can um, uh, have sleeves. So, you know, everyone should know the dress code. It's in our, it's in our um, documents and uh, we're going to be monitoring it. We want to make sure that even if you have kids or grandkids in town that they're not up there wearing, uh, you know, basketball shorts or t-shirts when they're either using the driving range, putting green, or going out on the golf course. So just be respectful of the dress code rules uh, while you're out there as well. Um, we are going to be having our GPS trackers back in our golf carts here really soon. Uh, we've been transitioning from the old golf carts. Some of you have probably noticed that we have the new lithium battery carts that are uh, in play now. Once we get all the trackers in there, we're going to go ahead and we're going to also uh, hand out the uh, homeowner carts to the trackers too. So that way we can monitor the pace of play on the golf course. Uh, our rangers, we have two rangers a day that are out there on the golf course. They're going to have tablets that they're going to be able to monitor the pace of play on. Um, so all the golf carts have uh, numbers on them and we have numbered trackers in each golf cart. Uh, we're going to hand out those uh, trackers at the starters booth. Uh, someone from the golf pro shop staff is going to be doing that coming up um, to all the homeowner carts. And as far as pace of play goes, that's another hot topic. Um, you know, it, it includes um, walkers as well. When you're out there on the golf course, um, do your best. It's all the things that you do in between shots that can really, you know, bog down pace of play. Play ready golf. Uh, the USGA has a new set of rules out there in 2019. A lot of you have seen the videos that I've done on it. Uh, there's a link to this video that actually that shows all of those different videos as well. Um, the pace of play video is on there. Uh, give some of my opinions on what you can do to help proper pace of play. Um, playing ready golf is really the most important thing. Uh, being ready to hit when it's your turn, uh, not socializing too much when you're out there, um, not dawdling in between shots, uh, making sure that you have the right club in your hand and ready to go. Um, we do want to make sure that everybody gets around the golf course at a proper pace because now we're getting into, like I said before, 400 rounds a day. Um, you know, we want to make sure everyone gets around the golf course in the right amount of time. And the worst thing that can happen is a slow round, especially if you're out there for more than four hours and 20 minutes. We don't want that to happen as we get going now here. So hopefully the GPS trackers, if, we're, uh, if everyone's aware of it, we're going to have the monitor up inside the pro shop as well and get everybody around the golf course in the right amount of time. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say. I just wanted to say I'm looking forward to uh, continuing on the... Uh, the great golf tradition that we have here at Pelican Sound and um, if anyone has any questions they can always come and contact me come see me our staff is uh, in place and ready to go and uh, we hope that you enjoy your time at Pelican Sound that we can bring you a great golf experience thanks folks